Today we're going to be going hands-on with Microsoft Lists. It's in preview in Microsoft 365 right now. And if you don't have it in your waffle menu, we found out that there's still a way that you might be able to get it. There's a specific link that you can go to. So if you want to learn how to do that, be sure to watch this video. Hey guys, my name is Mitch. And recently I discovered that you can access Microsoft Lists in your tenant potentially. I think I found a post on Reddit that said if you go to your OneDrive and then get rid of OneDrive.aspx at the end of it and put in lists.aspx, it'll bring you to the new lists app. Even if you might not see it in your waffle menu yet and it loads up totally fine and you can try it out for yourself. If it's not available to you yet, we're gonna take some time to dive into the different templates and just the general interface for lists so that you can get a good glimpse of what's to come in the next couple of months. So first we're gonna start off with the most basic functionality, how to create a list. So we're gonna go in to the new list interface here and there's a couple options to start. The first option is blank list and you are essentially gonna just configure everything yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. The next is from Excel. So this is a good option if you want to bring in data that you're already using a lot and you want to see how it feels in the Microsoft Lists app. So this will open up to your OneDrive and the files in your OneDrive. Otherwise you can upload a file and it will walk you through importing that file and you can customize the columns however you'd like. The last option is from an existing list. So this is gonna open up all your SharePoint sites and you can navigate through those and pick one of the lists that you want to take from a SharePoint environment that, that doesn't have all the list functionality and bring it into the list app where you can customize it further. The next thing we want to take a look at is templates. At this point in time, Microsoft has eight templates for you to start from. I usually like to just take a look and dive into each one and see kind of how they perceive this tool working and try to think, is there a way that I can use these templates in, a, in my working environment and um, make use of them there? So I'm just gonna take time to walk through each one and show you the columns and just kind of give someone a look if, if they don't have access to this tool yet. So the first one is Issue Tracker. So this is uh, to track issues and bring them to closure in this list. So I think this is generally something that is going to be a list of things that don't necessarily have a path to resolution yet, but something that we know about that we want to bring resolve to and um, keep track of it in this app. So you have a title, description, and then able to set priority, status, and then you can assign it to a person or group, which is misleading because it's, it's not going to show up in your, your task apps yet. Um, I'm hoping that one day that they configure that so that you can pull in those these list items into a task app. Then they have date reported, uh, days old. I'm assuming this is kind of something that auto generates and then some URLs for a source, images, associated file, who logged the issue. Pretty basic, but good starting point. The next one is employee onboarding list. So when you bring someone on board, there's common things that you want to do, and this might be a good place for you to keep track of the status of all those things. So um, what the type of work is, description, complete by. So this is kind of a cool one, like what, what part of their onboarding experience should they be in when this happens? Is this done, completed on, mentor? So this is another one where um, it might be hard to draw a distinction between um, a task and keeping track of this information in lists, but I think one opportunity here is to say, hey, they need to do these types of things. There might be tasks associated with doing that. Uh, so setting up a laptop might involve a lot of different things. and. This is kind of just an overarching place for someone to, to keep track of where that thing is, if all the collective, collective tasks are done. The next is event itinerary. So this is a good spot to keep track of 
items that happen throughout the day for an event and you want to keep track of some some ancillary information associated with them so like a session they have a session code um, what type of session it is the description speaker you know a lot of pretty self-explanatory columns here location capacity the next is asset manager so right now sharepoint list might do a decent job of this but this is going to introduce those extra graphical elements that uh, make it really nice to use so showing a photo a little badge of what the status is manufacturer model serial number so I imagine larger corporations are going to have a different system to plug this all into, but uh, our company's small and we don't do a good job of keeping track of our assets right now. And this might be a good, good idea for us to try to plug our stuff into here. Next is recruitment tracker. So I'm actually managing our hiring funnel through SharePoint right now through a list and different views in that list and a couple of little automations, but this could take it to the next level. So we have uh, name, position, progress, who the recruiter is, application date. I, I really like keeping track of dates of when you talk to people so we can look back and say how long did it take from them to first apply to get through our, our funnel and you know how can we look at improving that. Who interviewed them, what notes are associated with the different interviews, LinkedIn profile, resume. So that's recruitment tracker. Next is travel requests keeping track of all your trips that you have coming up and why and, and where to and just the dates associated with that. One of the things that I thought of when I saw travel requests is request implies that someone needs to approve it and this doesn't necessarily cover the whole approval process. Um, one thing that I didn't know when we started was that some of these templates do have some automation behind them or conditional formatting that they come with out of the box. I'm not gonna dive into those today, but I would think they should have something on here that would allow for creating a, an approval process associated with one of these items. Next template is work progress tracker. So this is another one where I feel like it blurs the lines a little bit between tasks and lists. I feel like the only thing you would wanna keep track of here is something that's overarching, that involves a lot of tasks underneath it, something you just want to keep track of at a high level. And from here, you would create tasks in Planner or whatnot and assign it to the team. So there's work item, description, what type of, of category is it, um, progress, priority start date. Yeah, so that's just a quick look at progress tracker. The last one is content scheduler. This is one that I think we are going to use here, and that is to keep track of some, some types of content that we want to produce and identify how we want to distribute that content. So we have content title, description, author, status, draft due by, image, content type. So you can identify a blog post, it's a social media post. So I think we're going to use this just to keep track of, hey, we have this idea. We want to produce some content around it. Do we want to do a blog? Do we want to do a video? Is this something that we should just send out on social media real quick on, on something like Twitter? How, how do we want to share this information? So that's it for the templates. Uh, when you get access to Microsoft Lists, I'd encourage you to go poke around and create a couple lists based on these templates. And like I said, dive into some of the more uh, deep settings that they've configured with the conditional formatting and, and all that. The next thing I want to talk about is just some of the common commands that you would do on a regular basis in a list. So we're going to dive into a sample list here. Uh, so I'll pretend this is for employee onboarding. And I just wanted to kind of talk through some of the, the commands that are pretty common to those that are familiar with SharePoint lists, but maybe some of you haven't worked with them very much before and want to know what some of these do. So quick edit is going to change this into kind of an Excel looking structure and you can populate all the different information in here and 
This is more helpful when you have a lot of rows and you can fill down and populate a lot of data quickly. So once I'm done populating this information, I can exit quick edit and it's going to save all those items. Cool, we got a little check mark there for complete. The next thing is share. So this is something that I talked about in my last video about how you can share these things with people and what permissions you can associate with that sharing instance. So I can come in here and I can say, I want to share this video with Michael Wright. I want to give him full control of this or he can only edit or only view this list. Uh, this is obviously dependent on where this list is stored. So if this is somewhere on a team where he has access to it, he's going to have different permissions, but this is something that you can individually give someone in a separate instance. So last thing is export to Excel, and I don't think this is working right now. I get an IQY file extension on this. I think it's something that is probably supported on Windows at the moment, but not on Mac. But I would expect this to just download an Excel format of this information and kind of extrapolate what these different formatted columns mean. So a, a checkbox would probably say yes instead of showing a check. All right, next let's talk about automation. So this is one that I noticed looks a little bit different than the demo that was shown on the Microsoft announcement or the first look at Microsoft lists. So you can create a flow based on this list or just go view your flows. Very similar to what SharePoint lists show right now. So the thing that isn't showing here that was in the demo was create a rule. Create a rule opens a pane that you can pick out some criteria for when you want something to happen and use that sentence structure to create a rule for what happens in this list. So if someone creates a list item and associates it with a specific person, for example, that that person would be notified or some different criteria could happen based on that logic. The next thing in this menu is Power Apps. So let's take a look at this menu quick. Um, you can create an app, see all your apps, customize forms. This customized forms is very similar to what you'd see in SharePoint where you can create a customized look to how you input data into the list and how you can view that data as well. The next thing we want to take a look at is view configuration and seeing the different formats that we can view this list content in and then also creating the common filtered views for different use cases. So right now they have this compact list option available, which is going to condense everything down, make it look really tight if you want to look at a lot of content at the same time. In the demo, they have another view option that they don't have listed here right now, but that is the gallery view. So that is more of a grid structure. It's going to display a bunch of tiles across the screen. And then it also has a, like a, a tile configurator functionality that you can use to order the, the fields or if you want to show an image at the top, um, just kind of configure that card however you want to see it. So right now we have this content filtered by our service areas. If we want to just see all the items and filter them by something different, we can, we can do that. The thing to note in this menu is format current view. So this gives you the option to format a specific column or the entire row. When I do the entire row, I can alternate the row styles. So if I want to differentiate the different rows and make it easy to scan across a row, I might do that. Otherwise, I can do conditional formatting. So I can do if this progress is equal to, let's say, not started, it's going to show blue. Obviously, they're all started now. but you might use this for something like, hey, if this is blocked, I want to show it as red. One other thing that I noticed was interesting was uh, if I dive into column settings, I can format this column. And so this is a, a newer option where I can format the choices as pills. And I can edit those styles. And if I go into a specific uh, like category, I can configure more styles. I can configure what icon is displaying here, if I want it to show as a different font or be bold, if I want borders around it. It's a really cool, intuitive interface that you can use to customize lists and use it however you like. Last thing I wanted to do is remind you that this is coming to Teams 
all this functionality is going to be accessible right within the Teams interface. You'll be able to add a tab to your Teams view and show whatever lists that you want associated with that specific team and use all the functionality that we talked about here within Teams. It's also coming to mobile devices soon. They advertise it's something that's going to give you essentially all the same functionality that you get in the desktop version right on your Android or iOS device. So that's just a quick look at Microsoft Lists and its interface. I'm excited to see what they do next. They say they're working on other templates and features in this app, so we're going to be sure to keep our eye out for those and update you as we see them. If you want to stay in the loop on this kind of content, be sure to click that subscribe button. We're generating other content related to other Microsoft 365 tools that you probably use, so be sure to check out our channel and see if you find anything else useful there. If you have any questions about Microsoft Lists, or maybe I didn't cover something that you want to see, uh, leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer you. Once again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.